Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will discuss about second edition of Stanford Bina Intelligence Test that is entitled SB2. As I have already told you in the previous video that Stanford Bina Intelligence Test was originally published in 1916 by Terman at Stanford University. And I, after that, it was revised different editions and different revisions of this test appeared. Over 20 years later, after the publication of Stanford Binet test, Maud Merrill became the member of Stanford University, shortly before Terman became the head of psychology department. Merrill completed her master's degree as well as her PhD degree under the supervision of Terman and soon she became his colleague and both of them started working on the revisions of second edition of Stanford Binet test. If we talk about the normative sample of this second edition, the normative sample includes 3200 individuals with age range of one and a half to 18 years of age. These individuals belong to different geographical regions as well as from different socioeconomic status. The purpose of this is to comprise a broader normative sample for normative group of uh, SB2. This edition applied a more objectified scoring method where greater emphasis were put on the non-verbal abilities of human being and less emphasis were given to the recall memory as compared to the first edition, 1916th edition. One of the unique feature of SB2 was here the term created two parallel forms of Stanford Binet test. These forms used many of the items from the original Stanford Binet revision and added a number of new items too. These parallel forms were labeled and these were published with the title of form L for Levis and form M for Maud of the Stanford Binet test. Levis term uh, and Maud Merrill used the title of form L and form M for these forms in the publication of the, these forms. Now the third edition of Stanford Binet uh, test appeared after the death of uh, Levis Terman who died in 1956. But at that time uh, the revisions for the third edition were almost complete and Merrill was able to publish the final revision of Stanford Binet test with the title of SB3 in 1960. So SB3 appeared and published in 1960. The most important feature of SB3 was here the term deviation IQ was first time appeared in this third edition. Now the term uh, ratio IQ was replaced with this deviation IQ. The ratio IQ was the term and ratio IQ was the method that was used for calculating the IQ level of individuals in the first two editions of Stanford Binet test that is SB1 and SB2. As I have already told you that ratio IQ can be calculated by dividing the mental age of the individuals with the chronological or physical age of the subject and by multiplying this number with 100. It, has, it, it will give us the number uh, the, of uh, ratio IQ of human beings or ratio IQ of the subjects. Here in SB3, this ratio IQ was replaced with the deviation IQ. Now, how this deviation IQ was calculated? It is based on the comparison of the individuals. It is based on the comparison of the subjects with the uh, comparison group, with the performance of the comparison group. How to compare this performance? In the comparison between the performance of a single individual of a subject with the performance of the com comparison group that is the standardized normative group of that subject. So here in SB3, this was the unique feature of SB3 to include the deviation IQ instead of ratio IQ in this uh, third edition. While new features were added, but there were no newly created items that were included in this revision. Instead, any of the item from 1937 form that showed no substantial change in difficulty level from 1930s to 1950s, they were either eliminated 
or they were adjusted another most important feature of uh, sb3 was the two forms that were created in sb2 with the title of form l and form m they were combined and these forms were labeled as uh, a unique single form with the title of form lm this form lm was published in 1960 and then it was renamed the norms of this form lm were reconstructed uh, in 1973 this form added alternate items at all levels but otherwise the format of this form remained similar to the 1937 form form now the fourth edition the fourth edition of a stanford bine intelligence test appeared after merrill's retirement when thorndike thorndike was asked to take the responsibility so thorndike with the help of hagen and settler produced the fourth edition of stanford bine intelligence test in 1986 now this sb4 covers the age from 2 to 23 years of age and has considerable changes as compared to previous editions of stanford binet test now in this edition for the first time 15 subtest with point scales were used and this point scale uh, was introduced for the first time in sb4 and uh, the term a scale format was replaced with this point scale format in the previous editions of stanford binet test in sb1 sb2 and in sb3 a scale format was used in scoring and interpretation of the results but here uh, the point scales were used as a scale was based on number of questions that were correctly answered by the uh, individual of any specific age for example if a 6 year old child can answer uh, the question uh, number 1 correctly that question will be placed into that uh, sp- specific uh, co- um, scale of um, individual with the age of 6 and if uh, any question is uh, not answered correctly by the 6 year old that was not included in the sub scales related to that age scale here the point scale was used instead of a scale format point scale include for example two point scale three point scale four point scale this was introduced in sb4 for the first time in an attempt to broaden the cognitive ability the sub test the 15 sub test were uh, grouped and resulted into four major areas the sb4 included 15 sub test that were grouped into four major areas and these four major areas include verbal reasoning abstract or visual reasoning quantitative reasoning and short term memory now what is verbal reasoning verbal reasoning is the ability to understand and to comprehend the concepts that are expressed through language it is the ability that how we understand how we reason and how we engage with written and verbal language if we talk about the uh, abstract visual reasoning it is to understand and to comprehend the visual unclear objects how we perceive how we uh, understand the visual objects that are abstract and unclear and if we talk about the quantitative reasoning quantitative reasoning means the application of mathematical statistical and logical skills to interpret the data and to produce the new information and short term memory as we all know that short term memory is the second type of memory that is memory that stays for the brief time period so as before has 15 sub test that are grouped into four broader categories verbal reasoning abstract and visual reasoning quantitative reasoning and short term memory it improved the flexibility for ad- administration and interpretation of this scale the fourth edition uh, has this o- uh, one of this unique characteristic that it can be used it has the items to um, for those children to assess those children 
that may be referred for the gifted programs it means that the, this fourth edition can highlight those talented individuals that can be referred to any gifted programs it means that fourth edition includes a broad range of abilities which provide more challenging items for those individuals who are in their early adolescence year whereas the other intelligence test of that time did not provide any difficult in item for the older older children so the here here the sb4 includes the difficult items too in order to screen out those talented individuals who can be referred to any gifted uh, programs are for scholarship